What is going on, guys? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Now, today, I am going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot here lately, and that is how often you should go and service and collect all of your vending machines. Now, granted, uh, this is going to vary greatly depending on what type of machine you have, whether you're in bulk or a full line. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion. Um, there's no formula on exactly how often you should do it. This is just from what I've experienced uh, from collecting as well as what I've seen others do. And this is basically just my opinion on how often I think you should collect. But granted, every situation is different and there's always different variables to keep in mind and factor in when deciding something like how often to collect and service machines. And just one quick thing before we get into all of that, if you all could just really help me out and hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you like this content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification if you have not already uh, to get uh, informed of future uploads so that you don't miss any of my new content coming out. I upload twice a week, so definitely stay tuned. So it's actually a pretty beautiful day out. What I think I'm going to do is head over to one of the local parks and kind of just sit in my car and record there. Just something that's a little bit different, you know, a little bit of a different view than my apartment. Uh, now that the weather is starting to act a little bit nicer, it has been rainy a lot lately. So head over there in just a second. Oh, and one other thing I want to show you guys is my fiance was nice enough to give me and surprise me with a little present. She got me a little keychain for my vending keys. It is a Pickle Rick, yep, from Rick and Morty. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show. I thought it was really funny. Um, you should definitely go check out Rick and Morty if you haven't already. I will say it's definitely not for everyone, but uh, if you like shows kind of like... Um, I don't know. It's like more of an animated adult show. Uh, so if that's something you like, like uh, Family Guy, um, it's really nothing like it. But I thought it was a cool show. So go check it out. What's up, kitty? All right. So I just pulled up at kind of like a local little park. Um, just kind of somewhere different to film. It's a really pretty day out. Uh, not very uh, warm, it's still pretty cold, but it is very sunny and at least very pretty outside. And there's geese right next to the car and they are squawking and fighting with each other and yelling at the ducks. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, you actually might even be able to hear them over the video. <laughs> But anyway, getting into what we were here for in the first place is how often should you collect? Well, like I was saying, it does depend on the type of machine and the type of vending. Uh, for example, full line, I don't do any full line at the moment. It's something that I plan on moving to in the future. So everything that I'm going to say to you all about collecting on full line is really just from what I've heard from other YouTubers like Farnsworthy Vending and Chrome Vending. Shout out to both of you. You guys have both been a huge inspiration on uh, helping me push myself to the next level and do as much as I can with vending. Uh, you've really, really been a big help. Uh, and if you guys... Uh, you probably already know that those channels, but if you don't, uh, definitely go check them out. They're super awesome. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, but basically from what I've heard, and correct, the, correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, guys, but from what I hear, on average, you go about every two weeks to collect and to restock and you know maintain your full line machines. Uh, now, I would imagine some of the slower locations you might let sit for closer to a month, uh, but I hear I don't hear that that's super common. Uh, and then sometimes, if I'm not mistaken, some of the better locations you will uh, leave uh, for only a couple of days and go check back, collect, restock, and all that good stuff. All right, so moving on to bulk vending, my bread and butter, something that I definitely know a little bit more about than a full line. Uh, I've been doing it for, I want to say, seven, seven months or so. Um, definitely been 
a little while, getting fairly close to a year since I've been, since I started doing bulk vending. All right, so when I first drop off a bulk machine to a new location, uh, I like to not check it until about one month. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, it's almost never needed to check more frequently than monthly for bulk vending. Um, and then the other main reason is I feel like if you go back before one month, uh, it gives the owner a little bit of a chance to change their mind and decide they don't want the machine. Whereas once you go after about one month, I think they get a little bit more used to it and they accept it a little bit more. So I think that one month is the perfect amount of time for the first collection after dropping off a new machine. Uh, and then after that, you can assess how often you should collect. From what I've noticed, uh, the average collection I would say is about one month. I think that's a good interval. That way you are, you know, you're showing yourself to management. You're showing that you're maintaining the machines. And I would say that that's probably the average collection time for a decent location. Uh, generally, when I go and collect a machine, I want to I want there to be at least twenty bucks in it when I go to collect it. Uh, that way, it's really more worth my time. So, some of my slower locations, what I've recently started doing is letting them sit for closer to two months. Uh, and then I think with some like, for example, single head gumball machines, I don't think it's necessarily terrible to let it sit for three months. Uh, but I would definitely go every two months uh, on some of the slower ones and the good locations uh, every month. Honestly, there's no point at all to going uh, more frequently than once a month. Uh, it's the beauty of the business really is how passive it is and how little you have to do to maintain it uh, other than really just collecting like I was saying. So you, you definitely want to space it out enough. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is well, when should you pull from a location? So when should, one is a location doing so bad uh, that you have to take out the machine uh, and then because it's so not worth it being there that you're losing money. Now, this is something that I'm not entirely sure about yet because I haven't really encountered it. Um, but I do have some very slow locations. I have one in particular that I'm considering pulling. Uh, just because it makes so little, but that's something that I'm not entirely sure about. Uh, I would say that if it's making less than 10 bucks, then you should probably pull it. Uh, but the reason I haven't on some of the machines that I keep that are making less than 10 bucks is one, because they're really close by. And two, because I have so many machines and that I still need a place because I did recently buy a route that I feel like even a slow location is better than no location. Uh, and that's not always true because of food cost. So if a location is selling so little uh, and you have, say, peanut M&Ms and M&Ms and gumballs, that you're not going to sell everything in the machine over the course of... Uh, say, you know, nine months, then the candy's going to go stale, it's not going to taste as good, and people will be even less inclined to buy it, making the already terrible location, uh, honestly, even worse, and you're just going to lose money from keeping it there, because you're going to spend more on product, and throwing away old candy, than you are on keeping, uh, than you are going to be making from that location. So one way to combat this is I guess you could put a little bit less candy in it. Uh, this is something I definitely try to do with my slower locations. Uh, I try to put just enough candy in the machines to last for three months theoretically. Um, and that's just to protect myself. For example, if uh, one of my machines that's in every two months location, uh, so I go every two months, uh, and for whatever reason I can't hit it, uh, or I'm on vacation or whatever, it'll still last for another month uh, with the candy that is in it. So just something else to keep in mind that sometimes you are going to have to pull locations. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was able to help you all out a little bit on how often you should collect your machines. Keep in mind, this was just my opinion, and there is no one-size-fits-all for vending. There's a lot of variables to consider, so... 
keep that in mind when deciding when and how often to space out your collections. Uh, and if you haven't already, please make sure you hit that like button and then leave a comment down below on how often you collect your machines and I will catch you all in the next one.